That's my new desk. This is the Trigkey i13, which, well, Trigkey, they're a new brand, and you can tell how new they are. They're just building their website. This is literally the website builder showing you where you can put some images that slide backwards and forwards. And this is the i13, which has got a core i9-13000 processor in it. Really excited to see that. And right now they are on Amazon.com and all the other Amazons, but they're just getting started on their website. This is really interesting to me because I'm going to answer a few questions with it. Firstly, I dusted off my old MSI, and I mean literally dusted it off because I haven't been using it much since I bought the GPD WinMax. And I did really enjoy that, and this is a Core Ultra 7, so this is a 155H, which is a year later than this, but it's also a totally different idea of how to build a processor. There's no hyper-threading in these cores, and there are also NPU units. Now, right now, should you bother to buy one of these new AI chips from either Intel or from AMD, where they've got these NPU units, but nothing is basically using them. Intel also made a 14,000 series of chips, but they were really designed for desktops, where that efficiency of an NPU wasn't really necessary anyway, because you'd expect the desktop to have a powerful GPU, which can do all the AI stuff, and you don't have to worry about battery life. Nice branding though, Trig Key. This is their key. I, so I think these are going to be the Intel ones. And we've got a range of mini PCs already available, AMD series with a Ryzen 7 in it. What's the green series? Nothing yet. And this in their Intel series, they've got some N95s, M100s, that type of thing. Looks like great value, incidentally. $153, I can be right. Okay, that might be the cheapest N150 I've seen so far. But this guy, I think this is their highest powered mini PC just yet. It's got 32 gigabytes of RAM and it's got one terabyte of storage. And I'm gonna try it out today and I'm gonna answer another sort of question that I have as well. It wasn't a question, but I'm delighted to see that it doesn't have rubber feet that need to be removed before taking the back off. I know a lot of YouTubers will be delighted about that. But you'll see there's a design quite reminiscent of some B-Link models because they're actually a sister company to B-Link as well. What's that all about? CLR CMOS, I have no idea. It does have an external power supply, but not a very large one, which is nice to see. I'm gonna try out theory because I think I won't even be needing this. I think that... My new mini workstation might consist of this mini PC, this monitor. So which one is likely to be the display port? I think the front. One of them is USB 4 and the other is USB 3.2. A keyboard and a mouse. Now that one is not giving me a signal out, so it must be USB 4 here at the back. Yep, there we go. Yeah, that's incredible. I mean, that is absolutely wicked, isn't it? That is just... So I'm not going to say too much now, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to get this all set up and then I'm going to run the benchmarks and stuff right now. Use side view just to see what's on my screen here. And I'm really interested to see, is this faster than my desktop i9? It probably will be. And does it mean that I should actually just forget the desktop altogether? Now the one argument that I've always had for the desktop is just how many peripheries that I have just plugged into it. So having things here on a desk makes a lot of sense. But I'm conscious that, you know, you could actually very easily set up a workstation just anywhere. You could set up a workstation in a tiny little space with this, with these glasses. And this isn't the only mini PC that you could actually run that workflow on, but it certainly seems like it would work just fine for that. A mini PC with a USB 4 out and you're away. You could literally have the tiniest little writing desk in the corner of your room and have a full ultra wide setup. I'm also very interested to know the difference between the current Ryzen R9 versus this i9-13000 chip. But this has managed all of my sustained workflows with hardly skipping a beat. It's only really when I'm rendering and I'm working with Photoshop and I've got something else going in the background and a lot of tabs open and a lot of screens open that this really starts to see the edges of its performance. So I'm not just going to benchmark this mini PC, I'm going to put it through its paces, I'm going to use it in that sustained workflow. I probably will open it up because there is space for another SSD within that there. And I think it'll be a really good time with a cherry mouse, 
the new HE keys from Keychron, x real One Pros with the spatial screen there, so six degrees of freedom on that device. You can keep your Mac Minis, although of course you could do this setup with your Mac Mini as well. The one thing I'm wondering is should I put my money where my mouth is and actually ditch this whole big computer setup and just go full on mini PC, or even just rely on these as my main screen? I could certainly buy back a lot of space in this office if I didn't have to have these large monitors on my desktop. Or actually, is it just that I'm enjoying the ultra wide and what I really need here is a proper ultra wide monitor. So I don't know, I'm gonna try out these options in the next few weeks and months. I'm gonna discuss that idea of what an ideal home setup will be, whether these actually do work at home or whether they're, as I originally thought, better just as an external desktop for travel. But I have really been enjoying these display glasses, in fact, and when they eventually come out with QHD or 4K screens in them, I will certainly be jumping straight on those. And this idea brings a lot to the table. I could certainly imagine a future where I didn't have to have these massive monitors on my desk. Let me know what you think. So this is what I mean really, it frees you up to set up workspaces in places where you wouldn't normally sit and work. Don't need these because I'm wearing my contact lenses. So now there's an ultra wide screen there. Oh yeah, it's, it's epic. And sure, you could work with a laptop here, but having that ultra wide setup. So I just got my first thoughts and my sort of testing results here and they're really positive. The i9 13900HK was their top mobile die CPU. So the HX series would beat it, but that's really a desktop CPU in a laptop chassis. So, you know, those beasts of gaming rigs, those mobile workstations in suitcases, that type of thing, that was the HX series. But the HK that's in here was a really top draw processor. And it's really good, as you'll see. It's got 14 cores and 20 threads, which is pretty darn good. The RAM speed is as good as you really get on replaceable RAM. So if it's not soldered, you're gonna get this 5,200 mega transfers per second. You maybe get a little bit higher than that, but not much. And it's got a one terabyte SSD in it, which is really good. So it's really good how much computer you can get at this price. Fast RAM, fast SSD, fast processor. You've got a good time computing. Okay, so now I'm recording the whole widescreen and all the pixels there as well. So you can see here in the middle, I've got the Geekbench scores. That's a pretty good single core score. Multi-core, not quite as good as some of the more up-to-date processors, but still really great processor score. The GPU score, not quite as good. Not bad though, not bad at all. But whereas this i9-13000 series is doing just fine against the Ryzen 9 that I've got, the 370, in terms of its processor, the internal GPU is not really keeping up with that. It's not disappointing, but it's not something to shout about. The next thing I'm gonna do with it is put in a second SSD, cause you have got the option to have the second SSD slot, and I'm gonna use it to edit a full review video of it on this PC. So that would be good to see. The disk speed is as expected, really quite good, read and write around the 500 megabytes per second, so top draw. And here you can see the comparisons, single core, almost up with the Dell Latitude, which has got the top draw Snapdragon X Elite. The multi-core is actually in line with the Ryzen 9 HX370, but the GPU score is way below all of those and not even as good as the Snapdragon X Elite, which the GPU is what lets that down. It's got about half the rating of my desktop, which is a 1060 Ti, so not a great GPU by modern standards. So as you can see, the Trigkey i13 is gonna be a great little productivity PC, but you might expect it to lag a little bit behind in terms of gaming and graphics performance. It's got a really impressive straight line speed in the single core and the multi-core CPU scores. It's really quite good. I was surprised to see it keeping up with this year's Ryzen 9 there. But the Intel Iris XE is clearly way behind what iGPUs are like right now. And I guess that's why they've abandoned that as a kind of brand. And now the newer CPUs have Intel Arc iGPUs, which are actually quite good. And for me at the minute, for GPU score, it's still my laptop 4070, which is blowing everything else away there. And what's nice to see about that laptop is it's actually using the Intel Arc and the 4070 simultaneously. So it does manage GPU intensive processes really well. But the uh, 
actual single core and the multi-core on that Core Ultra 7 just are way behind. But like all Intel CPUs at the minute, it does run quite hot. There's a lot of fan noise all of the time, even when it's idling. I also think it being in a plastic body doesn't help that at all. Fan noise. You can hear right now it's running, yeah, okay, a screen recording in OBS, fair enough. It's running a widescreen. It's not doing much though. It's not doing much by modern computing standards. So if you don't mind fan noise, you won't have any issues there. But I guess just plenty of warm air inside there is just constantly having to move that around. I really did enjoy using the mini PC like this with this very small footprint and this giant screen here. I would say that perhaps it makes sense to at least have just a small screen, just a 1080p small screen next to it, because I kept looking across to like check the status of what it was doing and thinking, oh gosh, got to put the glasses on and off to check it. So yeah, so I don't think just display glasses are the way forward. And that's why I think the little handheld mini PCs, I know they're meant for gaming, but they're really compelling for just different use cases like this, because you do have that little small screen, you do have a permanent keyboard and mouse at least. So yeah, it's a like this situation where you can set it up in flexible spaces and have a giant workstation, but you have that input and output actually built onto the machine. So on the next video featuring this, I'm gonna go ahead and run a fuller set of benchmarks. I'm gonna add a little SSD and edit on that. And also, of course, I'll game a little bit and see what I can push it for that. And coming up, I've got an idea to make a more meaningful comparison and help you choose the best options for PCs in 2025 because we're kind of spoiled for choice right now, aren't we? And I want to distill it down to what matters for each different use case. And hopefully my content in the near future will help you do that.